Well, it's been a uh, pretty lazy Saturday. Um, Sid and I just kind of been moseying around, piddling around a little bit. But uh, for today, and it's already pretty late in the day, I think it's like, it's like 3 p.m. Um, I, so far I've received in uh, quite a bit of the items that we need to get the boat uh, solar panel set up. So I got my um, Blue Sea Systems switch that came in today. So I'm actually gonna get the switch mounted, the uh, 40 amp breakers mounted, as well as the uh, Renogy charge controller. So you can see the panels off the wall right now. I have, this is just all the cabling um, from my, uh, from behind that panel. So um, all that's off for the time being. And here's the panel over there. So I'm gonna work on figuring out placement uh, we also had the 6 gauge wire come in and this stuff is thick and super heavy. You can see the thickness of that. Um, I do have small hands, but you can see the you've never seen 6 gauge wire. It is pretty darn thick. So you can get a lot of juice flowing through that if we need to. So pretty stoked about that. It is um, freezing rain again. So take a quick gander outside here. Ooh, uh. you can hear it coming down. See all this ice here. Pretty decent amount. And uh, you can see some of the railing here. It's a big piece. You can see all the I, I whacked off a bunch of the icicles. But See, it's on everything. I was trying to get it off the canvas. Ooh, it's hitting me in the face. Now it's like starting to hail rather than freezing rain. But um, I always get worried about it just weighing down the boom since that ice adds a lot of weight. All right, well, I'm an absolute idiot because there's no way that's gonna fit on that panel and allow this to still open. <laughs> so, Scratch that. Um, I guess that's why everything on here is relatively flush with the face. So this is not going to go here. I'm probably going to have to put it down here. So I'll have it down here. Unfortunately, uh, I'm not going to be able to see it as well, um, which which kind of sucks. But at least we'll have the app so we can check it from our phone with, via the Bluetooth module. This is really the only place I can think of that makes sense you know to put it wired in the 20 watt panel to see how it works um, but so far there's nothing on the screen so I might have to hook in the battery too but since we don't have the main panels yet I want to at least hook in the little 20 watt we have upstairs the temporary one just to see how the thing works but I don't even know if it's enough power to turn it on it's, it's not on <laughs> so we're weak yeah so it's pretty, pretty low on power but I'll uh I'll hook it up real quick to see how it um, performs once we hook it into the battery, just temporarily. Well, you can see the big old meaty cable here. So we had a success getting the six gauge wire all the way through kind of the wire um, uh, running area on the port side of the boat. It comes through there above uh, the shower through here and you can see that's where I undid the area to reach up in there and help feed it through and then finally you can see I even turn that fan off I even took the light out here to help um, get it over a little bump in there but it took a really long time and the cable actually got stuck um, when it was going in when it was feeding it actually had I was feeding it in this way from this is you know kind of the external cockpit seating area I was feeding the cable this way and it had actually looped up inside 
and then it gotten caught on something. So I actually had to drill a new hole, which I'll show you right now. So the cable, I initially ran it through there, and you can see um, that's the original hole that was used to pass through the uh, 110 volt, the two 110 volt lines. And there actually is a little PVC pipe in there that holds all the other cabling. So I tried to fit the cable in there. It was too fat, wasn't enough room. So initially I fed it in through that and then around this way. It had actually looped really like a real big loop like in here and then gotten stuck on something. And um, I actually had to drill those two new holes there to um, get the basically start the cable in that spot. Um, which which was a lot easier than starting it down there. It's really tough to get a good angle because you have to kind of reach behind this and like feed it in. It's really tough on your arm. So this one's a lot more direct. You know, you can go right in there. So um, yeah, I got the cable through, and you can see got a decent amount of slack left over. So I'm gonna install that little junction box in here with the terminal plates and. That will allow me to take all of the solar panels, um, their cabling coming in, and I'm probably gonna run it down the um, Bimini tubing here on the external, just probably zip tie it, run it down, and um, either go in through kind of like the, um, either the top here um, or potentially on the external part just so it you know matches up with the, with the um, 110 end. So that's what I'm leaning towards. I'll probably just coil this up and leave it in there for now since the solar panels um, and the junction box aren't coming um, for the next couple days. But glad to have done that. Um, it took quite a long time, probably about uh, three, three or four hours just to get it all the way in there. Um, I also spent quite a while trying to get the old threaded portion out of the roll mount. But unfortunately, even with a lot of penetrating oil, vice grips, and other things, it was not possible. Um, they are stainless steel, so it's pretty, pretty tough metal. Um, I ended up cutting it with a hacksaw um, just to so I could get the um, kind of plate fitted on here properly. This is pretty secure, I think. Um, I just use stainless steel um, Phillips screws, and I can put a decent amount of pressure on it. It doesn't really go anywhere, uh, but. I did find out with the grill, because I got that up and I was like, oh, I'll put the grill on now. The grill's pretty old as well, you know, as you can see down in there. There's actually a little knob on the bottom of it that allows you to attach it onto that mount. And the screw that was part of that knob was completely rusted solid. So um, I had to rip it out, and I'm most likely going to drill and tap um, another I actually probably won't even need to tap it because it's a pretty um, thin, you know, metal on the, on the bottom. Same as the top. And so I'll just drill a new hole and then find a new knob, you know, perch one at the hardware store. Um, so that I can easily get it off and on with my hand since um, I figure it's not, you know, you pro I probably don't want to leave it out in the weather. I mean, maybe we had a case or canvas cover for it. Maybe I'll make one in the future, but um, just to keep it out of the weather since it does have, you know, some, some special propane parts. The solar power integration is coming along pretty nicely. I now have the Renogy Rover mounted over there on the left. You can see the Bluetooth module down there. Uh, I would like to note the, that the Bluetooth app for this Renogy product is absolutely horrendous. Um, I probably wouldn't have bought it if I had known the Bluetooth app was this bad because that was kind of one of the functions I was really excited to use. Um, basically, you have to reconnect to the Bluetooth device every single time and start from scratch. So it's basically like you're starting up the app for the very first time and going through the entire start process every time you use the app, which is kind of a pain. Um, it doesn't keep track of any of the details over time and it doesn't even save the name of the Bluetooth module or anything like that. So it's really just designed for um, real-time uh, data or I wouldn't say it's even designed for real-time data. It actually has a historical data section, but it doesn't work. And like I said, it doesn't automatically connect to the device. You gotta reselect the device every time. So I'm kind of disappointed in Renogy for that. Uh, I mean, I know they make you know decent products, but the, the majority of the app seems to be there. Like the user interface is there, all the options are there. It's just weird that they wouldn't have it auto connect to the most recent device and also record the historical data. So 
I don't know. Um, it's, the app's been like that for at least a year or two, apparently, according to the review, so I probably should have looked at that first. Uh, some people have taken, it is just an RS-232 connection, so they have connected an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi direct into the serial connection and pulled the data stream direct off the um, Renogy rover. So that's, that's an option. I might consider it um, because, it's, I mean, the app's basically unusable. All it does is it tells you what the current um, power generation is, but it takes about a minute for you to go through, select the Bluetooth module, and then import the data, and then read it. So, um, kind of kind of a waste, wouldn't recommend it, at least in its current state. Um, so yeah, so that's in there, um, looking good, pretty, pretty meaty. Um, it should have enough clearance up top for the heat generation, at least for this application, because we're definitely not going to be doing uh, 40 amps uh, right off the bat. If it does come to it and I need to relocate it somewhere else, I can do that if there's not um, enough uh, cooling going on. Over here I have the breakers. So I decided against using that um, Blue Sea System switch. Let me turn on the light here so you, go, so you all can see. I decided against using the Blue Sea System switch because I felt like having a switch and a breaker was kind of redundant because um, essentially they're just going to do the exact same thing. It's just going to cut the power for me. So I'm um, gonna save the switch for a green day for something else and just go with the two breakers. So the left breaker, the left 40 amp breaker is going to um, control the power coming in from the panels. So it's gonna come in from the top, come out through the bottom and then go to the um, charge controller. On the right here, this is gonna be the breaker that goes to the battery. So it's gonna come from the charge controller, through the breaker and then to the battery. Breaker number one is now in. I think I'm also going to install a, either a breaker or a fuse out at the junction box, just in the event one of those wires, uh, specifically the incoming wire here, up top that's the incoming um, solar array, somehow gets knocked loose and then touches something um, just in the event of a short, and I'll have a, a fuse out there as well, just, just to be on the safe side. Well, it's time to get these big old boys out of here. I've got um, one of my friends coming to help me take these out. Uh, he's fairly confident in his ability to carry 140 pounds up the steps. I can't really help out a whole lot because I have back problems. I'm not really supposed to lift more than like 25, 30 pounds. So um, he said he's pretty confident he'll be able to do it. Luckily it's low tide, so we're already pretty close to uh, level between the, the boat and the dock, so it shouldn't be really a problem getting them off. The, the bigger thing's going to be kind of getting them up the, up the steps here. So, we'll see how it goes. The new batteries are in, and the old batteries are out. I'd like to thank my buddy for coming down and helping me out. I uh, definitely wouldn't have been able to do it without him. Um, I, I paid him for his time and uh, effort. It turns out that the original batteries were about 165 pounds a piece, whereas these ones were 130. So he signed up for a little bit more than he originally thought, um, but he did a pretty good job of getting them off the boat and helping me take them off to the uh, recycling center. So I got about $33 back. I think 33 34 dollars back just for the lead acid scrap which is pretty nice and you can see uh, right now i'm just hooking it up the, the single battery at a time just to make sure it's charged before i you know start hooking them both together in parallel uh, just because you don't want them to be at different charge levels when that occurs i also put on there the the manufacturer capacity voltage installation date and weight since that would have been very helpful if it was on the battery, the, uh, the original batteries when I took them out, or when my friend took them out. These ones are a slightly smaller footprint, and they actually fit um, pretty well. The old battery actually used to sit on that wooden <clears throat> separator, and the new ones actually sit inside it, which in my opinion is actually even better, because now the battery can't scoot back and forth. And you can see there's another little wooden separator back there. So that actually works pretty darn well. And I could have gotten the Lifeline replacements, but it's just they're, they're a lot more expensive and they're really at the, I mean, the maximum weight that somebody can get off and on the boat on their own. I mean, 100 and, 160 pounds is kind of pushing it. And in my opinion, 130 is kind of right at that maximum. So I'm pretty happy with them. 
So I'm going to go ahead and get the other one hooked up and uh, make sure it's all charged up and then uh, put them in parallel. So I found out something kind of interesting about this battery bank. Um, the, these batteries actually aren't technically in parallel unless they have this cable connecting them across the positive terminals. These leads here actually run to what's called the house battery, which is the battery that powers basically all of this from a 12 volt standpoint, not the 120. This battery, if it weren't you know connected with this cable, is only the starter battery. So that handles specifically only the starter. At some point, um, it looks like the battery, the old batteries from 2006, they decided to remove or nix that idea, and then instead have two batteries technically on different banks, but then join the banks together with this one cable. So, I don't know, it's kind of a weird way to do it, and it's like a little bit confusing in my opinion. And that was why if I looked in here, there's two separate um, charging outputs. There's an AC output here for the charger and AC output here. And one goes to the DC battery bank and then one goes to the starter bank. So originally I had thought that the starter battery was depend or the starter switch was dependent on the DC switch, but it's not. They're two totally independent switches, um, one going to one battery, one going to the other. But then once you interconnect those batteries, then technically they can be used for both purposes. Now the battery charger is still switching between battery bank one and battery bank two, even though they're essentially the same battery bank, except there is the, the cable connecting the two. So when, when you have multiple batteries in parallel, you don't want to necessarily go positive to positive, positive to positive, positive to positive, and then have one positive lead coming off. And then same thing, negative, 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 negative lead coming off. Because there's resistance of the cabling. And that resistance results in different currents traveling to the batteries, in which case you have an unbalanced battery bank and some of your batteries can deteriorate faster than others if they were truly in true parallel with equal lengths of cabling. So even though we have this kind of um, you know, jumper cable, if you want to call it that, I don't think the system is unbalanced. It's basically going this connection, charge, this connection, charge, and it switches every 60 seconds. So I don't know, it's kind of weird. I don't think it's going to have any issues of battery balancing, especially when there's only two. But it's not something I want to tackle right now because I understand it, but it's definitely a pretty weird setup, but the end result is that the batteries are in, they're both connected, they're both in parallel-ish, and we now have the battery charger working, and if I turn the DC main on, we can start putting on everything that we had turned off previously. And there we have it. pretty much good to go. And we also have our nifty little charge controller there. I'll have to recalibrate this now. Turn off the lights, because the flashing light's a little annoying. Um, so I'll just have to recalibrate this up to 400 amp hours now. And um, yeah, we'll see how it performs. Maybe take the boat out this weekend and you know run it through the ringer, see what our, our load is, and see how the battery batteries uh, perform overall. So, Pretty excited.